everybody welcome to the channel and this is going to be a short video showing you the new patriot motorsports triple bypass oversized heat exchanger for the lt4 zl1 zl11 le camaro and this radiator has a massive amount of volume compared to the factory heat exchanger we're gonna fill it up with water and I'm gonna show you the difference in the volume. I do not believe in putting tanks all over the front of the car because that reduces the efficiency of the pump um, and its ability to have BTU uh, withdrawal of, of heat from the coolant. And I just didn't wanna add a lot of weight in putting another tank in the fender, another tank behind the radiator, and then another tank in the trunk of the car and then having to push water all around. This radiator is three and a half inches thick. It uses the absolute massive amount of, or the most amount of, of landscape you've got. I've even upgraded to this CSF heat exchanger, auxiliary heat exchanger, which I do not feel is a, a viable upgrade. I bought one, um, but it only has two more rows versus the stock radiator and it doesn't fit that well. In fact, the bottom bracket and the top brackets are hitting the, the outer area of that radiator. And it's just, I don't know, it's a bad design, it doesn't fit. So we'll end up making one of those in the future as well. So back to this, I'm gonna start filling it up with water and we're gonna see exactly how much volume this thing holds. All right, just finished filling this radiator up and it took more than a gallon. It's got a Petcock drain on the bottom. It has a large three-quarter NPT inlet so that you can put AN fittings or whatever if you want. It's got a vent on the top, and this is going to go up to my surge tank. It will tee in right there. That way, all of the fluid coming out of the supercharger pulls any bubbles that could accumulate and makes sure that 100% of this radiator is saturated. It's gonna be the highest efficiency ZL1, highest volume ZL1 radiator available in the market anywhere. I was late there. All right, so right here we have the factory heat exchanger for the ZL1. And a mixing cup. It has 32 ounces of water in it. And I'm gonna pour this in, and this is the, the bleed for the factory heat exchanger. And we'll see how much water it takes to fill this up. All right, so here goes the water. I'm trying to watch this video and pour all at the same time. Now I got this plugged off on the opposite end. And we'll stop pouring when it starts pissing. Let's slow down, let the tubes fill up. So far we're halfway down. We have 14 ounces left. Oh, there it goes. There it goes. So I poured, let's put this down so we get an accurate reading. All right, all right. So this test has been really, really fruitful because what we ended up doing is putting 17 ounces of water in this heat exchanger. We put just over a full gallon in the heat exchanger on the car. And that's because when I filled that water bottle up, I actually filled it up higher than what it was almost to the neck. And when I made the mark for a gallon, so I really have to go where I had it filled up. But what I'm looking at in my brain right now is that the heat exchanger on the Camaro now is eight times the fluid capacity of the factory 
heat exchanger. That's right. This only held 17 ounces of coolant or water. 17 ounces versus over a gallon. A gallon is 128 ounces in case you don't know or can't remember that the big gulp is 32 ounces. And then if you go to some of the truck stops, they sell them at 64s, right? So eight times, eight times the volume of my new heat exchanger. And I have 100% of the saturation, not just a cross flow. My heat exchanger goes across then back down and then back down. So you get 100%. My triple bypass heat exchanger gives you 100% of the saturation to remove heat from the water. And that's a humongous bonus. All right, we're back here at the front of the car again. We've hooked up the hoses. Um, we've drained all the water out of it as much as we can get. There's still a little bit of residual water left in the tank. It, uh, as I said, I filled it with more than one gallon. And uh, even though we think we still have some residual water in it, the uh, little pet cocks right here. And um, I will, uh, I'll go ahead and tighten this back up now so it does not leak anymore. So yeah, we filled this up. When I, when I started, it was about right here. I really didn't realize where one gallon was. So I ended up taking the graduated cup I have over there, the 32 ounce cup, and I filled this up um, to make sure that number there was one gallon. This is what I drained out of the radiator. So we probably still have a few ounces of water left in the radiator. But in my calculations, the factory heat exchanger holds 17 ounces before it starts to leak. We put over 130 ounces in this. That means we have a ratio of eight to one. So this is eight times the fluid volume of the factory heat exchanger. That's huge. This is the largest heat exchanger so far for a ZL1. So we don't need any other tanks, no fender tanks. This vent line here, we're gonna put a, a real rubber hose. It's gonna tee into this line going to the surge tank. That way, when the coolant comes out and goes to the surge tank, it's gonna pull any type of uh, bubbles or anything out of this, making sure we have 100% saturation of this front heat exchanger. And it'll displace any coolant bubbles into the recovery bottle, which with a 16 PSI cap, will most definitely get rid of any type of air that we have in the system. Again, we still have the auxiliary heat exchanger over there with two more whole rows for $400, um, which I really don't believe actually increases any volume because if you look at this tank, this is pretty pathetic. This tank is rubbing and it doesn't fill the entire bracket. Okay, it doesn't. It doesn't fill the entire bracket. Yet, when you go over here and you look at this one, this plastic tank does fill the entire bracket. So whether this has two fewer rows to, to for um, cooling, this has more volume. And we'll probably end up testing that. Um, I'm gonna end up building heat exchangers for the auxiliary side, but we're for right now, the Patriot Motorsports triple bypass heat exchanger is the largest and the most efficient in the ZL1 market. All right, here we go with the bumper cover in place and the closeout panels. What you're missing is all of the duct work that goes to forcing air to the different heat exchangers. All that is still laying on the ground. But I wanted to focus on the flow tie now supplying air directly to the heat exchanger for the oil dash 12 fittings for the oil cooler. You'll see that there's the Patriot Motorsports logo on our heat exchanger. And then down below, look down there beyond the dirty grill and 
that's the large bar and plate heat exchanger that fits well within the factory mounting location and we'll put the lower bottom tray on and then the splitter but the cool thing is that whether or not you have the griffin motorsports crash bar which had to be extensively modified both bars had to be cut re-welded the tops of it had to be modified the pickup points a lot of stuff it's not a direct fit <laughs> but the radiator whether you're not you have the crash bar or the factory impact bar is a direct bolt in and fits perfectly stay tuned for more testing and more results with this phenomenal setup